Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today we are diving into the medical school interview process. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any new videos. All right, so let's dive in. You have finally received your first interview invite. Oh my gosh, that is so exciting. Now, what happens now? I feel like when we are applying to medical school, you know, I was so focused on making sure that my personal statement was perfect, making sure that my activity sections were good. And then when I got my first interview invite, I was like, oh my God, I've been focused on everything else and like kind of forgot about that. But one of the best things about interview season is remember, if the school has invited you to an interview, you've already checked all their preliminary boxes. They've already looked at your GPI and your MCAT. They've already read your personal statement, your activity section, and you check their boxes. So now they just want to get to know you, see if you are a good fit for their school and their incoming class. But it's also a two-way street. It's an opportunity for you to see if that school can be somewhere that you want to start your journey to becoming a physician and that somewhere you would be comfortable training for the next four or more years. All right, so different kinds of interviews. There are two major types of interviews for the medical school application process, and then there are some subgroups in those. So the two major types are going to be traditional interviews and MMI interviews. So for traditional interviews, these are going to be kind of, you know, what you would think of for job interview, any other interview that you've done in the past, it will be you and an interviewer and the interviewer is asking you questions. Now there are some different subtypes for that. So most common, like I said, just one on one. However, there are panel interviews where it is you as the interviewee and multiple people that are interviewing you. So that could be, you know, faculty, staff, students. So it's just multiple people that are asking you questions. There's also group interviews. So there may be one or more interviewers, but this time there's going to be multiple applicants interviewing at the same time. So this could just Honestly, um, I had one group interview and the goal of that one was just to kind of like help expedite the process and get through more people at once. But it could also be to see how you interact with other students and things like that. So, so in addition to your interview, it can either be a panel or a group interview. It can also be open or closed. So open file interview is going to mean that the interviewer or interviewers have access to your entire application. So they can see your stats, where you've grown up, everything that you submitted in AMCAS and your secondary. On the other hand, there's the closed file interview. And that interview type, they know nothing about you. Usually other than your name. So like you have to give them all of the background. And I think this one's super fun because they have no preconceived notions about you or anything. It's just, you know, starting from square one. And then there's also partial interviews. So in these, those would mean that, you know, they have access to certain parts of your application, but not everything else. And from what I've seen, that usually looks like maybe they can see the written portions of your application, but they can't see your stats and things like that. So different types of traditional interviews, there's going to be a combination of those different subtypes, but all super fun. When you're doing your traditional interviews, you can get a variety of questions. There are a couple common questions that I highly recommend you want to make sure to prepare for. And so that could look like, tell me about yourself. Why do you want to be a physician? Tell me about an obstacle you've overcome. What are your strengths and weaknesses? What could you bring to our class? Why should we accept you? Things like that. And so I'm going to insert just a couple of clips from my very first mock interview that I did back in August of 2021. And so once again, of course, this is not perfect. This was for my very first mock interview, but just so you can kind of get an idea of how you should approach an interview. So my name is Morgan McManus, of course, and I am a rising senior at Clemson University with a health science major with a concentration in health promotion and behavior, minors in biological sciences and Spanish studies. And I've always been interested in the field of healthcare. I was exposed at a very early age because my mom is a nurse. So I was able to kind of see her when I was little. She was getting her online master's of science in nursing and then watching the sacrifices that she made um, working 12 hour shifts as a nurse. But I was also exposed a little more personally because my dad has had type 2 diabetes for the rest of for my whole life and my sister was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when I was six years old so I kind of got to you know play doctor with my dad giving him his insulin shots when I was old enough and then for my sister whenever we would go out without my parents you know just 
being able to encourage her to make the healthier choices or learning how to calculate the boluses for insulin pup and then advocating for her when people didn't understand, you know, what was type one diabetes and how she got that. So that was my early interest in medicine, but it was really solidified when I started volunteering at my local hospital in middle school. So I was about 13 years old and I was really exposed to all of the different um, careers that you can have in healthcare. So I was able to observe C-sections and comfort patients in the orthopedic surgery floor and transport infants in the newborn nursery. So I was able to see, you know, what the nurses do, what the physicians do, what do techs do. And it was in those moments that I really realized that I think the physician would be the best part for me just because of the responsibility that you have. So caring for a patient as a whole is really a teamwork responsibility, but the physician um, kind of has the full responsibility responsibility to care for that patient. And you have the um, breadth and depth of knowledge to really be able to listen to a patient and maybe recognize some concerns that they don't even know that they have. So being able to listen to their story, understand that, and then care for them in the best possible way and be responsible for their total care. I think that's what drew me not only to healthcare, but specifically to becoming a physician. I think the biggest motivating factor is definitely dealing with my sister having type one diabetes. One thing that I often got, I remember this memory a lot was when I was in PE class um, and every year after my sister was diagnosed, my PE teacher would say, oh, your sister has diabetes because she's fat and she has type one diabetes. So that's not linked to that at all. And so I think really just understanding the advocacy part, that has been my biggest motivating factor. And so I'm not sure exactly what specialty I'll end up in. I'm leaning towards something in primary care because I really do enjoy those longitudinal relationships with patients. But I think it's motivated me to know that we need more physicians who are willing to, you know, make sure that individuals understand the underlying factors behind their illnesses. So being able to actually sit down with a patient and make sure that they have an adequate health literacy level, make sure that you understand why they make their certain health decisions so that we, we can figure out how to improve their overall health and lifestyle. I think that's been my biggest motivating factor because that's the role that I see myself playing as a physician is being able to change the lifestyles of my patients and not just them, but my larger community. So incorporating that education aspect into the career in medicine as well. And that's all stemmed from um, my sister's diagnosis. I have shadowed a variety of physicians and right now I'm actually working at a family medicine practice. It's more of a direct primary care practice. And before this, I was really interested in pediatrics. So I've always been interested in just the entire building relationships with patients, having that longitudinal relationship and being able, like I said, you know, my background is in public health for my undergrad major. And so I feel like primary care is a great opportunity for me to be able to incorporate public health into my patient care and the treatment. But I think after working at the primary care practice, I really just realized that Outside of those relationships, being able to, you know, treat infants in the morning and then in the afternoon, you're treating their grandmother. And so being able to build those relationships with the family, I think that's what's really drawn me to primary care. I also have a completely free resource on my website, melanin-in-med.com. It is a traditional interview guide to help you start from square one all the way to interview day. It has everything that you could ever need to get you started. So definitely make sure to check that out and download that from my website. Now the other type of interview, MMI interviews. I think that these are the most fun because I just, I just think that they're so fun. So MMI interview stands for multiple mini interviews. So instead of having, you know, maybe one to two traditional interviews where you're only going to interact with one or two interviewers throughout the day, the MMI interview is going to give you the opportunity to interact with multiple people, you know, like upwards six, eight, 12 different interviewers throughout the interview day. So the MMI interview would be different stations and they're going to be short. So you'll go up to a station and you'll have a prompt and then you'll have a couple of minutes to review that prompt, plan how you want to respond. And then you'll go into a room with the interviewer and you will respond to that. So there are a couple of different kinds. So the traditional um, MMI interview is going to be there's a prompt and you are going to just have to go into the room and talk about how you would react to the interviewer. 
then the other kind is actually going to be the acting scenarios and in the acting scenarios you will have to take on the role maybe it's a physician maybe it's a friend um, a parent anything like that and so you will actually be interacting with a standardized patient in this scenario and so instead of just saying how you would react you actually have to take on the role of someone else and act that out so I thought that these are super fun and MMIs are great because you have the opportunity to reset after every single scenario so it's not just okay I felt like I bombed this one interview and that's my only one you're interacting with multiple people every interviewer is going to rate you um differently and independently so make sure in the MMI, it's crazy, it's fast paced, but you have so many more opportunities to build rapport with your interviewers and um, really take advantage of the interview. So now that we have discussed the different kinds of interviews, I just kind of wanted to dive into a QA. and a So I asked on Instagram for you guys to ask me any questions that you have about interviews. So let me see what we have. First one, do they ask MCAT type knowledge based questions and how do you respond if you remember? I did not get any questions that were like knowledge based, like tell me the crab cycle and things like that. I think that, you know, you demonstrate that knowledge on the MCAT and your coursework, things like that. Interviews are really an opportunity for them to get to know you as a person and see how you would fit kind of with the vibe of their class. Now, the questions that I got related to medicine and healthcare were really going to be more ethical questions. So especially with Roe v. Wade, you might be asked about how do you feel about abortion with patients or do you think that COVID-19 vaccines should be mandated and I think that the UW ethics resource I will link that down in the description is a great resource um, if you haven't worked in healthcare or if you just need a little bit um, to brush up on current topics in medicine. How do I explain who I am like it sounds so simple but I don't want to be generic. This is a good question because in almost every interview that you get you're gonna have to answer that basic question tell me about yourself. And I think, you know, we want to fall back on our accolades, especially as pre-med students. We're so focused on, you know, checking those boxes, but it's important that they just want to know who you are as a person. So what I recommend is going back to the basics. So tell me a little bit about your hometown. Where'd you grow up? Tell me about your family. I talked about my college and my hobbies and things that just make me happy and who I am as a person. I just talked about those things rather than focusing on things like what awards did I get? What was my research? Because they're gonna see that in other sections of your application. So try to highlight things that um, they don't know about you already. Well, this is a good one. This is about natural hair, wash and go or slick back. Humidity can make my hair go poof. I totally understand that. Um, I'm. You can see that I have braids in my hair right now because I am moving to New York in a couple of days and I'm just not sure like how the weather's going to be up there and transitioning to medical school so I just wanted to have something a protective style that was going to be a lot easier for me to manage so I personally did a wash and go my natural hair that you can see in most of my Instagram photos most of my other videos 99% of the time I am in my natural hair so if you are doing virtual interviews a lot of the interviews for the 2022 2023 application cycle are going to still be virtual I would just go with your regular wash and go no need to do anything special for interview day however if you're doing an interview that is going to be in person you're going to be doing a lot of walking um different climate things like that I'd probably go the slick back just to um alleviate any issues because I know like my wash and go when the wind starts going I just look like who done it and why so um ultimately the most important thing is to do what makes you comfortable and remember that you don't want to go to a school that doesn't accept you just because you're wearing your natural hair so do what makes you feel comfortable and rock that natural hair all right the next one why do you want to be a doctor super good question so it's kind of like didn't I already just write my entire personal statement about this question like what else do you want from me and that's can kind of be how it feels but remember you know there are more things like the personal statements 5300 characters or 5000 characters depending on what application cycle you applied through and there are probably more things that you couldn't include in your personal statement that impact why you want to be a doctor so personally 
I went back from the very beginning. I talked about kind of, you know, how my dad and sister had diabetes, so I was exposed to, like, healthcare issues early on, and then also my mom was a nurse, so I was just exposed to the field of medicine very early on. I talked about how I started volunteering at my local hospital at the age of 13. That's something that wasn't included in my application elsewhere since it was a high school experience. However, in interviews, I thought it was integral to my journey to medicine, so I decided to include it. So I really talked about how when I was volunteering, I was able to volunteer at different units and see different specialties. And that was really where I got to see how every member of the healthcare team worked together. And that's when I truly decided that I wanted to be a doctor versus nurse, um, PA, NP, that kind of thing. And so I think it's really important to, you know, make sure you talk about just the reasons why you want to be a doctor and don't be generic like I want to help people definitely review your personal statement that can always help just to kind of see like where those initial interests um lie make sure that you just truly reflect on your past experience and I also like to highlight you know when you're talking about why medicine don't just say why healthcare. you want to address why you want to be a physician specifically next question how to explain withdrawals and retake classes super good question Sometimes you will see in secondaries like explain any grade below a C or explain any inconsistencies in your academic record. So you might want to address those there. However, in the interview, you're advocating for yourself. Like this is the one time where you just get to hype yourself up. So unless they ask specifically about your withdrawals or things like that, I would not bring attention to it. Like tell me about yourself. Like no, let's not jump into you know w's and classes that you've retaken because guess what it happens and it doesn't say anything about your ability to be an amazing physician however you know maybe they ask you specifically about it or maybe it's you know they tell you about a time that you've overcame an obstacle and you feel like that's important to highlight there once again just remember that this is not the time to make excuses it is really just to share the facts so what happened? Why did you withdraw from the class? Why did you retake the class? But most importantly, show growth. So when you retook the class, how did you improve that time so you didn't have to do another withdrawal or you didn't have to retake it again? And how have you used those lessons um, throughout the rest of your academic career? If there are any significant lessons um, that maybe you will take into medical school and beyond, definitely highlight those as well. Last question, how to navigate questions that catch you off guard. This is so, so, so important. So I think like the MMIs, of course, those are going to be questions that you simply could not prepare for. And that is when they give you time. So they're going to give you time to kind of like review the question or the prompt before you go in with the interviewer. However, when you're in a traditional interview, like it is you and the interviewer. And as soon as they ask that question, like the spotlight is on you. So I think definitely for those, it's totally okay to say, that's a very good question. Give me a second to think about that. I think that that shows a lot more maturity and self-awareness rather than jumping into trying to answer the question then all of a sudden you start rambling and you go off topic and you never answer the question prompt so it's okay to say that's a good question that's a difficult question take a pause before you start answering the question but as much as you can try to answer the question if you just google like medical school interview questions you can find lists of hundreds of questions just like scroll pick a random question and answer it um i think that's definitely the best way to kind of prepare yourself for the unknown and make sure you do mock interviews the more you feel comfortable with just interacting with someone else via a screen or in person and just answering questions on the spot i think the more that you'll be able to adapt on interview day Alrighty, so that is just a little bit about interviews for the medical school application process i will drop some links in the description to my resource on my website in addition to a couple of posts that i've done on instagram in depth about the different interview types remember interview day is your time to shine and it is a two-way street make sure that you are also interviewing the school while they're interviewing you so if you end up in the situation where you do have multiple acceptances you can make sure that you choose the best school for you Good luck on interview season. I am rooting for you. If you have any questions at all, make sure to drop those in the comments. I can respond to those or make another video if you think it will be helpful. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my future videos and connect with me on all of my other social media channels. Thank you.